Now, uh, the film society, the film society built by Shatujit Ray and Chidananda Dasgupta, that started showing films to their members. And to be a member of the film society, you have to have money. You have to give subscription. And none of us had anything with us. We didn't have money, but then we were particularly uh, Ritik Ghatak. Ghatak and I, we were invited by them. We were their guests. And uh, so we could see the Film Society films as well. Because we didn't have that much of money to be member of, to be members of the Film Society. It doesn't take long, I mean, enough money to do that. We didn't have that enough. <clears throat> so we, we didn't have anything. We just wanted to make a great crash into cinema. That was it. And we used to watch films and we used to write on films as well. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, what did we do primarily was writing on the aesthetics of cinema, on the art of cinema. I used to, I personally, I used to write on the aesthetics of cinema, on the connection between cinema and poetry, on um, cinema and painting, cinema and music. These are the things which I used to write. Uh, and uh, then we also, uh, both Ritik and I, Ghatak and I, we used to, um, we used to um, uh, <coughs> sort of, uh, we used to uh, write reviews as well, reviews of films in different papers and getting some money, not much. Because we were not considered by the professional uh, journalists to be real good journalists. Because to be knowledgeable, to be knowledgeable in cinema was considered to be a positive disqualification at that time. That was what we felt. You all you must not be knowledgeable. And that was the time we came to know about Ray, that Ray was trying to make a film. In the meantime, Ray, I am not talking about Ray because you have a lot of stories about Ray. How did he got initiated into cinema right from the beginning? So his interest in cinema was from the beginning. And that you must be knowing from other books. And must, the other people must have told you about him. So it has a continuity right from the beginning, right, of, right from his childhood, it has a continuity. But with me it was very different. Even Ghatak, Ghatak had interest in cinema much before I uh, developed interest. But as I told you, my interest was, it was just accidental. I just walked into something and it's, I saw that it is cinema. <coughs> it was like that. And then uh, in the we heard about this, that Ray was trying to make a film, trying to organize fun. And then that is what they did. And it's a very long story how Ray came into cinema, into practical making of the cinema. He used to, that was the time when, before that, even before that when he was even a student, he used to see a film and this is what he heard, he used to see a film and used to write the script of the film, which he saw in his own way. So he had a very, very, uh, you know, uh, deep-seated roots of cinema in him, which I didn't have any. And then I also thought that I could make a film at that time after I started writing on cinema, on the dialectics of cinema, which I, uh, some people, I mean educated people liked very much. And then I thought I should make a film. And then finally I also made a film. And it was released uh, 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 about a year later. Before that, Pate Panchari was released. It was great. It was great. I would say that it was the greatest film ever made, I mean, uh, made since then. Before that, you know as much as I do, that India is the largest film producing country. Isn't it so? India is the largest film producing country, but it is not with any sense of satisfaction or sense of pride that I say it. Most of the films, most of the films made in India, even now, are just garbage. Only few are uh, good, 
and some are intended to be good, not good enough, but intended to be good. The intention is good enough for us. In a situation, in a, in a, in a situation that cinema is in India, it was like that. That was the time when Shatuji Tre came and made a film. Very scientific, his process of entering into cinema, filmmaking, was very, very scientific in the sense that he had the, some of the people who were all dedicated and it was like aggressive infiltration by a dedicated band of boys who just made an aggressive infiltration into cinema and made the film. And that was what was intended. That was what was necessary at that time. Because in a country which is very conformist, the cinema also used to be very conformist. And that was the time when outsiders had to come outsiders with enough knowledge of cinema and they were all young people and the, they, they, uh, they were together under the leadership of Ray and they walked into and uh, they made an aggressive infiltration into cinema and they came, they became insiders, they came to cinema and they became insiders and that was a great revelation to us and that was for the first time and a total cinema was built in India. That was, that was great for all of us. And my film was uh, made and released a bit later, about a year after that. And then it was the biggest of big disasters that could ever happen to a man. It was like a man suffering from Victorian morality who once in his lifetime had been to a whole house and trying to forget all about it. It was like that. I had never been to a whole house. I had never been to a public woman's house. But it was like that. The, after I met the film, I thought it's like that. It's terrible. And I immediately thought filmmaking is not my cup of tea. I would better write on cinema because I didn't undergo the same process which Ray did. I didn't undergo the same process partially, which partially did Gautam did. So this was how it started. So I felt so bad about it. I want to forget all about it. I want to forget about it. And that was so humiliating to me. I suffered humiliation because of my uh, misadventure. So I left cinema together. I went to a, <coughs> I became a medical representative pharmaceutical representative without knowing anything of medicine, but I became quite famous, quite famous because I could talk. I could talk on everything other than cinema, other than medicine. So, and the doctors liked that. Huh. Doctor, did, they wanted some, you know, relief from, from the medicines, medicine talks and all. And that was how I became very important, but I left it all together immediately and came back and started cinema again. The second film, even though it was, second film was made after three years, the second film, even though it was sentimental, and it was the structure in the, I was not very happy, but I still stand by the, by the, uh, I still stand by the, what I would say, by the political approach to the film. It was the, the, the politics that was reflected in that particular film, the second film I made. It was uh, <coughs> that the, our struggle for national independence is inseparably linked up with the democratic world's struggle against fascism. That was my subject. And uh, it is that the story gets, story goes back to the 30s when India was having a big fight against the Britishers. And when everywhere, all over the world, the democratic world was fighting fascism. So I stand by it, even now, even now, the politically, but then otherwise, it structurally, structurally, I didn't like the film. And, uh, but the film did very well. Even Nehru, Nehru liked the film very much because of its political, uh, because he was politically involved with the, with the whole thing, with the film. And uh, then I made the third film. So it was easier for me to find a producer for the third film 
I made a third film that was in ex absolutely different from the usual kind of films. So that is a film which I still, I have my love left for the film. The third film which I made in 1960 and Shotuji made his first film in 1955, Pathet Ponsen. And it's, it is very revealing that the, the, a film worth talking about, a film which was, uh, which was basically cinema, total cinema, that was made in India, that was made in India 65 years after the invention of cinema. The cinema was invent, invented in 1855 and the best and the first total cinema was built in India in 1955. Okay? And that was it. But if you ask me, which is uh, my, uh, I have seen after that, I have seen all of Ray's films. And I still consider that his second of the Opu trilogy, that means Aparajita, is his best film so far. So to, but because I find it to be so contemporaneous, very contemporary films. Even though the period, the Pate Panja Aparajita, the, uh, the sequel to Pate Panja, it was made in the same characters. It was, the, the story dates back to the late 20s and early 30s, okay? And uh, so the period is that. But I find it to be very contemporaneous, to be very, very contemporaneous. Because contemporaneity doesn't depend on, contemporaneity doesn't depend on the period. Contemporaneity depends on the attitude you have. Someone asked me, if you are marooned in an island, a journalist, if uh, you were marooned in an island because you were ship this sh you were shipwrecked, and then you could swim across the sea and went to and you could go to uh, <coughs> a, a sort of uh, island and you were all alone there and you have to spend the rest of your life in the island. Name ten films which you would like to carry with you, which you could see. I said I wanted to be smarter than the journalist. I said none. And then I gave a second thought and then I said, the only if I would take only one film, if I'm allowed to do that, only one film and a projector, this is what I will see all my life. And that is a film made in 1928 by a man called, um, uh, called what's his name? A man who made in 1928 silent film, uh, uh, The Passion of John Warwick. Passion of Jonova, one who made Vampire later. What's his name? Ah, uh, the Dutch Dutch filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Dutch filmmaker. Dutch. So he's a, that one. It was made in 1928. Passion of Jonova. It is Jonova. This that the same girl about her, and it's a silent film. But you know, I find it to be so modern. Even today it is so modern. I haven't seen any film which is more modern than Passion of John Burke. This is a great film to my mind. There was no spectacle. There was no spectacle, only the faces. The faces, there a lot of space, a lot of air in the faces. That is a film which I liked very much. Even today, this is, I consider that to be the most contemporary of all the films I have seen in my lifetime. So I, what I say that contemporaneity doesn't depend on the period. Contemporaneity depends on the attitude. So attitude that was reflected in Aparajitu was marvelous, was so modern, so modern. And Ray had made a number of other films on contemporary subjects, but I never considered those films to be as contemporary as, as Aparajitu was. Am I clear? This is my feeling about it. Because he made a number of films on the contemporary subjects, but I didn't find them to be enough contemporaneous as much as I found in, in Aparajita. And I knew that the film will not do well in the box office because the people will not like this attitude, the, the relationship between the mother and the son. The, it was because of the fact, primarily because of the fact that he could, Ray could give 
a bit of himself. It was somebody in uh, a journalist in a press conference asked me in uh, Venice Film Festival, the, to what extent your films are autobiographical? I said none, physically none, but I breathe in every sin. And the same way I feel that I, I found this film, uh, I found in it that it is not physically, not physically, but uh, I found it is so close to his autobiography, close to himself. That was it, marvelous, marvelous. And I found a bit of it also in, in uh, do you know this, uh, I should tell you about it. The girl who played John, John, John Walk, the girl who played it, that was the first time uh, she played, she acted in film. And then after that, she went mad. She got sick in head. She got sick in head. Uh, and she died after that. Yes. Her name is Falconti. Falconti is the name of the girl. Anyway, that was how it happened. And the film didn't, well, the film was rejected, the second film was rejected by the people. Take it from me, because other people will say a lot of other things. But I can tell you, I know that it was rejected by the most of the people here in India. Because this is not, it is so, uh, uh, as I told you, that ours is a very, very conformist country. It was so non-conformist in attitude in terms of attitudes, in, ter in terms of relationship and all. But even Ray, at one time I had a talk with him, he said he finds some problems with the, uh, with the technicalities of Operadito. This was perhaps because of a kind of defense mechanism. Because this film, since this film didn't do very well at the box office, that was perhaps why. Pardon my saying so, that was perhaps why he tried to find what are, the root, what are the reasons why the people didn't like. I think this is entirely on the psychological ground that the people didn't like. They couldn't accept it. But they felt that uh, technically it has some lapses. I think this is something, if you try to find that, all the films, good, bad or indifferent, you find technical lapses here and there. Even in Pathe Panchali there are technical lapses. So what can you do? For instance, when you, uh, <coughs> or when the boy and the girl, they go to the, uh, they, when they go to the, uh, to see the uh, locomotive for the first time, they, they, uh, they just run through the car field, and they go there. They stand there, <coughs> and they are simply charmed by this. The, if you find the black smoke coming from the horizon line, then it cuts across. You see that. And suddenly the whole thing goes, the camera goes there, on the other side. And the, cam uh, this, uh, uh, the locomotives starts moving the other way. Uh, and there are people, you will find people, the critics and the pundits, uh, the researchers, who will think a lot, quite a lot about it. This it was made with and it was made deliberately by Shotuji Tree that he went to the other side by crossing the imaginary line, going to the other side, 180 degrees, and taking the shots. It was very different. I don't think it was like that. I don't think it was like that. And if anybody tries to build a thesis out of that, I think he's a tally, he's mistaken, he's a fool to do that. I think it was like that, perhaps when the shot was being taken. Maybe this is the story. When the shots were being taken, uh, the Bonsi, his friend, philosopher, and in a way, party guy too. And he was moving about, he went to the other side, and he suddenly saw another locomotive, another train went there, and then once he saw that through the wheels, he could see the people. Immediately, he must have said, money, come here, you see, you can press the camera here, you can see, yeah, you can press them, the boy and the girl there, and you will see how they're, um, you know, uh, the, the, the car goes, I mean, the, the wheels and everything moves. And you can see the children and at times you don't see them. And then again you see them. That is very interesting. And the shot is so interesting. And Ray didn't have 
couldn't be that merciless at that time to cut it out. Because a good filmmaker, a real good filmmaker, has to be very merciless. There are plenty of good shots, plenty of good shots which he finds, no, this is not the place. We can't have it. And they, while editing the film, while doing the montage, and the filmmaker has to be merciless, to throwing away plenty of good shots as much as he does. Uh, <coughs> Our he must have done the same thing in his own area. So this is what has been happening. Anyway, so the, uh, these are the things which happen. For instance, in Aparajito, which I liked very much, I think this is the best, his best film. And when uh, there was a talk about film, uh, this, these people, uh, British Film uh, Institute asked me to write a book and he gave me several titles, they gave me several titles, write a book on one of the titles. And it has to be 70 pages or 80 pages book. So I said, I'm not a professional writer, so I won't write. They said, no, we know that you like Parajitu very much. And then ultimately I agreed. I signed the agreement. I signed the agreement that I will write it. There will be other people, there will be about, and there are three films by Shatuji Tri which have to be written by three people. I don't know if the books have been out, I don't know. But I, then I suggested other names, the both uh, Indian and outsiders, but they said, no, you have to write on uh, Aparajita, uh, <coughs> the Unvacuist. So, but I didn't. I finally, I signed the agreement. They gave me, sent me a check. I returned the check. I said, supposing I can't, I don't think I will uh, run you down, but then supposing I don't write, then it will be very difficult for me to return the money in, in my hard currency. So you better take it, and only when I write, then you will pay me. So I didn't write a single line about it. But there also, you can find mistakes. For instance, I didn't like this, uh, this uh, the death of Harihar. Have you seen the film? Death of Harihar, this is one thing I didn't like at all. Because in, uh, it's okay? Yeah. Over. I'm talking to her. <laughs> can, I, can I continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're talking together for oh, size it's, of shots. It's coming down, doesn't matter. Uh, so, these are the cracks through which poetry enters. <laughs> these are the cracks through which poetry enters. You know, and this is not my statement, made by a great filmmaker, the French. Um, now, what is happening? Mm, there, for instance, in Bhutibhuti uh, Bhushan Mukhopadhyay, on whose stories the tr tr trilogy has been made. In, it's very interesting that Bibhuti, in Bhutibhuti Mukhopadhyay's book, there is no death shown directly. Just before death, he writes up to the point just before the death and then there is a little space and then again something else. Because he perhaps he feels that death cannot be portrayed that much. I didn't like the, the, the way he, he, Parihar was shown dying. But then before that, before that when the boy went to the, went to this uh, dock, the cart to take water from the Ganga because the water needs to be poured. And he stood there just before dawn. He stood there and he found a big bodybuilder doing like this. It was great. It was great. And then comes back and then when he started, oh, and then he dies. That is one thing which I couldn't face. It. I didn't like it. I could, always, whenever I see the film, I close my eyes. But immediately after that, when you find the flight of birds, that again, it immediately, you know, it leaps into a fantasy, it leaps into a concept. That was great. This is one thing which I didn't like. Another thing which I didn't like in Aparajitu, even though I consider this to be, uh, to be comparable with the greatest films I have seen in my life, anywhere in the world, even though I feel it, I can tell you about certain lapses. Say, one of the lapses was there, you, I don't know if you remember that, a, a sequence was being built beautifully, beautifully by, by Ray, uh, when he gets the letter from the wife. He starts reading the letter, reading the letter in the 
in the office. And then when he's in, he's, he's in the tram car on the way back home, he was reading. And then when he was coming up the steps, because he used to live on the terrace along with his wife. You remember that? And he, they, he was reading. And a beautiful moment was built. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He went up and then found uh, his brother-in-law, the wife's brothers standing there. And then what happened? Then he broke the news that during childbirth your wife died. It was very difficult for Oku to reconcile the fact, the gruesome fact. He couldn't reconcile himself to this fact, to this gruesome fact. So all that he did, he slapped the boy on the, on the face. Every time it was like that, the, in the theater, this, they laughed. The people laughed. Every time he kept his lap, the people laughed. And then one day, I had a talk with Ray. They said, did you see, what's the, what's the point in making film here? And that, uh, what, do, what, do, what do I feel about it? I say it's a great sequence, great sequence. But how is it that the, he, uh, after the slap, he slapped the um, uh, boy who kept, broke the news, who broke the news, and then the immediately the people started laughing. Every day, yes, I saw the same thing, and I hear that the people do laugh. And I know of some very important uh, intellectuals in Calcutta, they also felt this is very bad. I think, I, I told him, so don't you take me otherwise. I feel it is great the moment when he slaps the face of the slaps on the face of the, uh, the brother-in-law. This is great. But then after that, camera stayed for some time in the editing on the boy. He doesn't know why I have been slapped. So that becomes ridiculous because your focus is on the man who is suffering. The man who could, who could not reconcile himself with the reality, with the terrible reality, that should have been the focus. He slaps the man on the face and the camera should have gone with him. There would not have been any laughter at all. Just a few frames on the man, on the man who gets the slap. And that is because he found a very beautiful cutting point. His, it is a two shot uh, composition and he slaps the boy. Immediately with the slapping cut to the close-up of the man who gets the slap. What is this? I have been slapped. And this is laughable. But it shouldn't be like that. He just couldn't uh, could get away from that, the, the, this interesting cut. He wanted to have that interesting cut. But what was very important at that moment, the focus should have been on the man who is suffering. Constantly, not. I can't leave him for a for a for a split second. I can't leave him for one hundredth of a second. He has to be with me. He has to be with this uh, specter. So that is why the, he slaps, and immediately the camera should go with him inside the house, inside the room. That would have been very good. That would have uh, that would have changed the entire the 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 color of the sequence. That was it. So these are the, uh, this is what I feel. Maybe he will not, he said, I think you were right, I think you were right. Hmm. But then he didn't talk about it later on, but I didn't also talk about it later on. Because he became great, I also go, went my own way, that was it. So um, after that, I feel that Ray, the ten great, you know, the wonderful years of Ray, from 1955 to 1965, when he made that film. This um, 1965 is uh, the lonely woman. I'm in Charulata. This is a great, you know, this this 10 years of a of a master, great, except a couple of titles which I felt a little uncomfortable about. One is uh, the about a the taxi driver in the countryside, 
that is in, uh, what is that film? Obijan, uh, Obijan and Chiriyakana. These are the two films which are very different from his other films. I just couldn't generalize the man. It is very important to generalize the man that he goes the same way. Even though the stories are different, even though the characters are different, but these are the two films which are very, very different and which do not have, uh, the, which lack the real debt. This is what I found. And uh, so, but then otherwise, this I would go all out for this ten glorious years. After that, I had at times I felt uncomfortable, and at times I felt terribly let down. Take, for instance, the last three films, which I didn't like at all. I wish he had not made any of the three films, last three films. It was so because he had been, every time they, when he started making films and when he used to write on films, when he used to talk on films, he had always been, you know, like that. He had always been so, uh, going interior, the when arrow quivers into the flesh, when arrow penetrates your flesh, arrow does quiver. You know, he starts quivering into the flesh. Like, mm, so he could catch, capture these quiverings into the flesh. Arrow quivering into the flesh. Uh, quiver, you know quiver. Arrow quivering into the flesh. And he could catch, capture everything in that. That is what he did. But the last three films, it was the uh, the exterior reality which he was interested in primarily and I for one I couldn't like them none of the three films but then otherwise I consider him to be a great great filmmaker and if cinema exists in India cinema exists in the world because along with others Shatujit Raya was also there you cannot think of Indian cinema without Shatujit Raya he, this is, he is the first one and he was great in many ways and uh, talking internationally he was one of the one of the greatest in international cinema i wouldn't say the greatest one he is one of the greatest in international cinema okay anything else i have spoken enough yes sir <laughs> I want to be, you know, will you go ahead? If you ask me to, to talk, you know, the truth about him, about Shatuji Tri, my own ideas about him. Well, I would say that I have great love for him. I have great respect for him as a great filmmaker, as a mm, as a great uh, technocrat, as a great innovator. But at the same time, I have my criticisms about him because nobody, none in the world is very complete. Huh? So he is also, to that extent, he is also not complete. But then here in India what happens, particularly in West Bengal, what happens, the moment they find a big bang coming in a very big way, you see, you feel and uh, there is a tendency of putting him on the pedestal. I want to see him coming down from the pedestal so that I can look deep into his eyes and admire him more. But this is not done. This is not done. If I am a bit critical about him, because I have every right to be critical of my own master. This, is, this has happened in other areas, for instance in science. In science, it has been like that. Uh, the, the, the student uh, of, a, of a great scientist has been very critical of, his, of, the, of the master at times. So this is a part of the part of life, and that is what is not done here. This is a big problem. I remember once um, after he wrote the book, the compilation collection of his articles. I read all the articles before that, 
and they all were published. And uh, that was published in a book form by a very eminent uh, publishing concern. And uh, it's called Their Films, Our Films, Their Films. And I was asked to do the, uh, in, I was asked to do the, uh, uh, do the review of the book by a very important paper that just came into being. That was Sunday. Sunday is not in a good shape now, but Sunday was a weekly. It just started at that time. And the editor came to my place, and uh, he is now a very important man, journalist. So the editor came to me and asked me to make the film, uh, to, to uh, review it. I said, well, I am all out for it. Um, I, I can go gaga about the, about the book, but I have also my criticism about the book, about some of his ideas. I have some, I have some uh, problems with, uh, with some of his ideas. So I can talk about it. You see, you are free to do that. I said, I can't do that. Because the moment I do that, and he has manpower, Ray has manpower, his people will start writing. Uh, I mean, uh, he will start writing, we join us. And I'm the only man, I have to manufacture stories uh, because of that. So this is what was done once. And I didn't have to write for others, but they did it. When I made a film called uh, Akash Kushum, there was a big fight. It went on, it went on in a, in a, in a most important daily here called The Statesman. It went on for one, uh, one month and a half. There were so many, uh, so many correspondents there. So it was the same thing. I said, I don't want to do the same thing. And then they will, I won't find any other people, so I have to write myself. So no, they insisted and I wrote about it. I was all, I called it uh, his book, my comments. Our films, their films. I said his book, my comments. And then uh, I wrote very, uh, you know, whatever I should write about it, whatever I felt about the book, about the, about the different articles. And in one article, that was an article which was uh, published, which he wrote after Bhuvan Shom became, uh, uh, became a, a big case in, 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 in Indian scene. So it was being liked by people. They say this is new world, this is new wave, something. I didn't say that. They said it. The people said it. They liked it so much that Ray came out with uh, with an article. He wrote something. He said, "Is new wave a possible, a feasible um, phenomenon in India? Is it possible in India?" And he wrote about new wave, about Godard, marvelous piece. I could never imagine that one can write about Godard, his philosophy, the quintessence of Godardianism in such few lines. And he did it beautifully. And at long last he said that Bhuvanshram is a, is a old wine in new bottle. There is nothing much about it, nothing to talk about it. This is what I didn't like. And many people didn't like it, the way he was, he reacted to it. Maybe the people around him, they provoked him. But he is a man who shouldn't have been provoked. But it was, he wrote like this, the last few lines. So I wrote about that in my uh, article. In my review, I wrote about it, that this is perhaps the best uh, article in the whole book, where he wrote about uh, Park, about the new wave and all. The way he described it, the way he, uh, he explained it, and then coming to the last uh, paragraph, where he mentioned a film which incidentally was made by me, made by the writer himself. And there I have something to say about it. And then I said something, a few lines about it. But I was very, very respectful when I was writing this, when I was being critical of him. When he said that, uh, in another article, when he said that uh, the British cinema didn't come up, because of uh, constrictive inhibitions of the Britishers. I said, if it is that, then how come the British drama could be so great? How come the British painting could be so great? Anyway, this is not my area, so I leave it that. I speak on something else. So this is what I said. Some of the things I, I, I 
this uh, I, I contested some of his points in some other areas and then it so happened it was very interesting it was so nice of him I got a telephone call I tell you this is for the first time I'm telling you perhaps it is there also in that book I called him and he called me he said Minam I have read your review you have put me to shame he said it you have put me to shame it is so great of him to say like that I said did you notice the mild dig I had at you yes that is why I say you have put me to shame and then I said believe me I could have sharper dig at you I could have you know I could have sharper dig at you but I just didn't do that because of the because of the psycho fence around you they would have made your life miserable Hmm. That is one reason why I didn't do that. I feel like going to your place so many times, I, as I used to do previously, when you started making films from 1955 to 1965. I used to go to your place so many times. Having seen your film, I would have I would have gone to you. And then he sometimes supposing I didn't go there, I was I went away. I went somewhere else, and he asked Monsi. What is what has happened? Minal hasn't come so far. Ten days is gone. Ten days are gone. The film after this, and the film started. The film uh, release was was released, which means Minal perhaps Minal didn't like the film. He said, I don't know. Maybe. And then when she told me, and I went there, I I said that whatever I felt, I used to say, I used to talk about it. And then I said on that day after he took called me. After the book was, I mean, the review, he read the review. I said, do you know, I want to come to your place. Why don't you come? I said, I want to come to your place. But when I see you surrounded by the psychophants, I start talking to you. I can't talk to you the way I should. Because they also start, um, you know, uh, I mean, supposing at a certain point of time, you and I, we don't agree on a certain thing, and suddenly you find someone <laughs> who is very close to you, he will start fighting me. And this is one thing I don't like because we don't speak the same vocabulary. We don't speak the same language. We don't uh, have the same, we don't have the same wavelength. That is why. Oh, I understand, I understand. I, then I asked him, tell me very frankly, do you feel very lonely at times? I do. And then I said, well, I will come one of these days. And then I went there and that is what the photograph you saw. He, he uh, uh, Nimai, took the photograph. He came to know about it, how I don't know. He has a horse sense and then he did it. Um, <coughs> that was it. You know, so the relation between me and him has to be very good for obvious reasons. You know, just before uh, he died. One of his letters written to a friend of his, that was not for publication, mind you. It was written to Chidananda Dasgupta. That was not for publication. He wrote a letter to him and he was very critical of me. Critical of the entire, and uh, my, my group, I don't, not my group, critical of the new filmmakers. I mean, who call themselves uh, the new wave filmmakers. I don't call myself new wave filmmakers. I make my kind of films, that's all. Uh, so he was critical of them, that they make films only for the, for, for the festivals, something like this. And finally, he focused on me. He, uh, he told me something about me. What is this? And he mentioned a couple of films of mine that uh, he doesn't know what happened to the uh, if the author of the character doesn't know what happens to the character, how did she spend her night? Uh, this is something I can't, uh, I can't, I don't understand. So this is what I did. This is about my film, one of my films, when the woman, the only breadwinner in a family, didn't come home that night. And it is not obligatory on her part to say why didn't she come. 
I created the situation in such a manner I didn't say it. But the, the people liked the film very much. And they, they came and asked me, what happened to the girl? How did she spend her night? I said, so it means you didn't like the film. No, no, we liked the film. And they are, most of them are working uh, class, uh, working girls. And says, I said, well, you say on one hand you like the film, but you want to know what happens to the girl. I don't know what happens to the girl. I have no unhealthy curiosity of walking into somebody else's private life. And even if she had an orgiastic experience with her boyfriend for the whole night, that doesn't disturb my film. My film remains as it were. And this is one thing I don't understand. And then he said that on one hand you like the film, on the other hand you want to want me to give a certificate that she didn't do anything which is not approved of by the society. This is one thing. This is the contradiction these the women here suffer from. But in Europe, whenever the film whenever the films have been shown, there was not a talk about it. The film was very much liked in Europe. And I remember once in a in a uh, in, in Paris, a group of Scandinavian uh, group of women. They organized a screening of the film, that particular film. Uh, it is called Agdin Pratidin. Um, so there, uh, they organized a screening and they invited me, so I went there. So there was a, after the screening, there was uh, a, a talk about it. Uh, so, and then uh, the question answer. So from the question answer session, I could realize that they liked the film. And then at the end I said, I have a question. I understand that yours is the most permissive of all the societies in the world, about the Scandinavian women. But don't you think it is a very trivial subject that a woman didn't come home one night? Does it make a story? And one woman, Scandinavian woman said, Mr. Sen, you have made a film taking your milieu just taking your milieu as something which is very valid for you and your characters. The milieu. And my job as a spectator was to develop respect for the circumstances, respect for the milieu in which your characters live. And then the whole thing becomes yours and mine. So uh, we consider this to be our film. So our, in, in, in Europe also, we, we are in a, uh, in a male dominated society. Male chauvinism is also there in our country. In your country it is more crude, but in our country it is very subtle, but it is there. It is there. So that is why we like this film. That is why we invited the film. That is why we invited you to come here and talk to us. It is like that. But Ray didn't like that. Ray didn't like that. I should, why, how is it I shouldn't talk about it? And then there were, it was published later on. And he was in the hospital. It was published. So they came the, from Times of India, from uh, the other papers. They came, they wanted to do a story. So all of them wrote about it. Sam Benegal, Kumar, Munikol, Buddhadev Das Gupta wrote about it. They started uh, accusing Ray. But I said, I don't want to do that because he needs peace now. He needs peace more than more than such things. So I won't write anything. But then, if at all you insist that I should write, I remember one thing. Once uh, about uh, the great filmmaker who made Orpheus. Who made Orpheus? Cocteau. Orpheus, huh? Cocteau. Cocteau. Uh, the, he said, I, I said it in my writing, in my rejoinder, I said it. That was only the year he died, only a couple of months before he died. I said, um, he said about this director, he said that Victor Hugo is a madman because he could never forget that he was Victor Hugo. I said it and that was it. And he must have been very angry with him, but then I couldn't say anything else. But I have very high, very high regard for him man. As a, as a man, as a filmmaker, great. As, a, as an artist, he used to work in diverse areas. He was great. But then there are areas when he and I, we did, didn't agree. But even then, I considered him to be 
in a way you are there is a question you are you wanted to ask me a question about the has it has i been influenced i have been inspired by him i wouldn't say influenced by him i have been inspired by him had he not been there it would not have been possible for the new filmmakers to make the our people of the people like us to make films like him it was he who started it he met the beginning and we just wanted to wanted to go our own way but i personally have been enormously inspired by him i would say i have been influenced by him 